I'm excited. Nervous, excited, high energy. Hello. Are you ready? I am. I think so. Today is a day where I get to have a baby, which is like I have like electricity springing through my body as I say that. But today is the day I get to have a baby. And um, I've been waiting four months. <sighs> my story starts when my water broke. 25 weeks when I walk in. I was literally 25 weeks that day, like 25 weeks and an hour. I remember walking through the doors, confused. I was supposed to go through the ER, but they told me just to go straight to L&D. And I'm like, labor and delivery, I'm not in labor. And I just remember the long hallways. I was alone in this experience. I had to rely on strangers. She was up here by herself, going through preterm labor, being very, very sick, and not having anybody around her that she knew. Teresa came on at 8 a.m. and stayed with me till 8 p.m. She was just so sweet. She was so scared. She was so sick that it just came to me that I wanted to do everything I could do to help her. When she went through all this, she was going to give birth to a live son who was going to be extremely sick. And she had to deal with that. But then at the same time, she had to give birth to a, another baby that she had already lost. The first twin passed. Her name is Nyla. The next concern was Xander. Can anyone save my baby? My body is in labor and this baby's about to come out. I can't stop it. I could not keep him in, I mean, I spent like two days trying to keep him inside of me, you know, because I knew his chances of surviving were so poor. And then the reality that he wasn't gonna be able to stay in, you know, your, the NICU team is already forming. When you see a baby born that early, you see that they're not really supposed to live. They don't have what it takes to live. And so when he was born, you feel he's not supposed to be out. You see him, he's not supposed to be out. You're like, please save my baby who's not supposed to be out. When the reality of it all comes, you know, even though we tell them and tell them and tell them, when that's your baby and you really can't see the baby and hold the baby at that time and you're trusting somebody's doing the best for the baby, that's very hard. It is awful. I wanted to cover him up. I wanted to hold him. I wanted to make him okay. Um, I wanted to soothe him because he was so uncomfortable. Every instinct to hold your child, to take care of them, to feed them, to protect them, you aren't the best person to do it. And that is the most really painful um, psychological experience that I'm sure every Nikki parent experienced, but that was so hard. Best hands for my child for the last four months were not mine. All right, you're not gonna like this honey bag. Take one off. I am a people person. I'm about connection. My dissertation is on connection. I was looking for anything, for any, that's my job, just any signs that something may not be right. And it's the more uh, invisible things that I'm probably really great at seeing. They had to be the one touching him. So I need to know that their intentions <laughs> were like mine, to feel comfortable with it. I've been a nurse for 35, 36 years. Um, so I have skill. I know how to assess a patient correctly. I know how to assess. I'm certified in fetal monitoring. I know how to watch what that baby's doing. Pay attention to what the baby's saying. Pay attention to what mom's saying. So I think literally I was able to hopefully give her the best care that she could have. Figuratively, I hope that I gave her reassurance. I hope that I gave her hope when there was hope. Um, I hope I gave her honesty when that was what she needed to hear. 
and I hope I gave her friendship, you know, somebody to say, it was nice to meet you and it was nice to meet your son. What people should know is that the medical staff absolutely are angels dressed up like humans. Walk and talk like humans, but what they are doing is nothing short of a miracle. And I, I say that with, with so much sincerity. I, and I, I don't like to overstate or exaggerate. For me, I struggled with a lot. I struggled letting go and there's certain things that I would like to do. I like people to talk to me a certain way and be available when I want them to be. Or, um, you know, I even had some, some things where maybe people were having a bad day, um, interactions I didn't like. But in the end, when I would have those difficult moments, it was, can I trust what's been happening to my son? And he is thriving. He's surviving. They have been just as concerned for him living as I was. To have gone through the NICU, the surgery with him, getting him to this point where she's taking him home is huge. It's a miracle. They taught me how to hold my son. My mom didn't. My, you know, my grandmother didn't. Leslie, Kathleen, Joanne, Mercy did. You know, they taught me how to change his diaper. All those rituals that are so important that you get from your family, I got from these auntie nurses, is what I call them. Bye. And that is such an important memento and part of my life that I will never, ever, you know, forget <laughs> and um, will always be grateful for. Yay! Yay. <laughs> she will look back on stuff as time goes on and realize that, you know, people did the best by her and by Xander and um, hopefully she can think back and smile and, and um, have a good life for him. That's what I hope.